Schiaparelli, an exceptional fusion of fashion and art. At the heart of the legendary house lies the true visionary behind these surreal designs. With an unrestrained, at times brazen originality in her work, Elsa Schiaparelli was ahead of her time. She created bold statement pieces, wearable art, and expertly crafted couture. Shocking pink, lobster dresses, and bug accessories captured the public's attention. With a history of bankruptcy and prosperity, the brand's indomitable spirit and enduring legacy is undeniable. A journey that lives on through the eyes of a new creator Daniel Rosebery, a man who embodies the same innovation and non-conformity as the house's founder, and in the modern age, creates a hype better than ever. The house was founded originally by Elsa Scaparelli. Born in 1890 in Rome, Elsa, going by the name of Scap, was from a very wealthy family. She grew up in a religious and conservative environment that prevented her from using her imaginative capabilities. Her mother even disliked her for being bizarre. She often conducted mischievous pranks. Once, when she was annoyed that she could not attend her parents' dinner party, she retaliated by opening a jar of fleas under the table, which set off an itching episode among the guests. As a child, she'd put flower seeds in her ears, mouth, and nose, convinced that they'd grow and make her as beautiful as her sister. The results were quite the contrary, as she almost suffocated. She'd say, if I cannot be the most beautiful, then I will be the most extravagant. And this theme continued throughout her work. Elsa went on to study philosophy at the University of Rome before publishing a book of sensual poetry. The controversial work shocked her family, and so she was sent to a convent in protest, Scaparelli went on a hunger strike, which led to her release, aged 22. In pursuit of emancipation, Elsa escaped to London, taking a job as a nanny. Two years later, she married Count Wilhelm Wendt de Kerle, a self-described consulting psychologist, whose speciality was making predictions about the future, and rumouredly was only interested in Elsa's dowry. Together, the couple were deported from the UK for a lawsuit against her husband's work, and so they moved to New York during World War I. Here, she made new friends, Gabrielle Picabia, a writer, and her husband, Francis Picabia, a dadist painter. Dadaism and surrealism were thriving art movements around this time, especially in Paris. Artists produced work in a variety of mediums that depicted dreamlike visions, imagining life in another reality, with a focus on non play and provocation. Scaparelli's interest in spiritualism and her powerful imagination led her affinity to the movement. Through this friendship, Scap met surrealist artists Marcel Duchamp and Man Ray, two people she'd go on to work with later in her career. Whilst living in New York, she had a daughter, Maria. However, with her dowry running out and her husband's unfaithfulness, Unfortunately, their marriage began to dissolve. By 1922, aged 32, freshly divorced, Elsa and Maria moved to Paris, following her new friends. Amongst her new crowds, Elsa met the cutting-edge designer Paul Poiret, the man who'd freed women from wearing corsets, eliminated heavy-layered clothing, and introduced newer, looser-fitting clothes. Scaparelli became his apprentice and started designing extravagant clothes, whilst also wearing some of Poiret's more daring designs that she'd been gifted. In 1927, after admiring a jumper worn by a friend, Scaparelli commissioned the knitter to make one featuring her own design, a trump loy, an optical illusion. The black and white detailed around the neck created the illusion of a bow, scarf, or sailor suit. She then wore the piece to a lunch surrounded by fashion buyers. Her work received immediate attention and orders from American representatives. Scaparelli was very quickly on the international map. The uniqueness of the piece gave Scaparelli huge popularity, and she was even featured in Vogue, who labeled the design an artistic masterpiece and a triumph of color and blending. After the initial feedback and with no formal training, in 1927, age 37, Elsa opened up her own atelier, partnered with businessman Charles Kahn, the House of Scaparelli. The House of Scaparelli was based in a small atelier in 1927, in the Rue de la University. By 1932, she had 400 employees producing seven to 8,000 garments per year from the atelier, which they'd now expanded to the four Rue de la Paix. She was continually making headlines and had become the only rival of industry titan, 
Coco Chanel. Chanel was creating classic clothes for women. Meanwhile, Scaparelli brought them into another dimension. Scap broke every rule. She used wide draping, numerous brooches to fix her lack of technical expertise, which in turn became a love design feature. Exaggerated accessories, usually animals, mermaids and insects. She'd merge skirts with trousers to create the skirts and introduce innovative materials such as artificial fibers and plastic zippers. Scaparelli's designs were so avant-garde that they still have the power to shock and inspire contemporary designs today. More so, her clothing was also extremely practical, adopting new technologies to create garments that made women chic and comfortable. She invented the first bathing suit with a built-in bra, the see-through raincoat, the ladies evening jacket, the wrap dress, and even shoulder pads. She also worked with the idea of interchangeable pieces. She made the sachets that turned into skirts, jackets that became headdresses, and skirts that became capes. Scap would do whatever was versatile and unexpected. Ella actually put a poll on this in the look circle the other day, which by the way, is where we have all our daily conversations with you guys in our community about all things luxury fashion. Anyway, we asked, which woman do you think had a bigger impact on fashion, Elsa Scaparelli or Coco Chanel? And here are the results. If you want to join in the conversation next time, make sure you subscribe to see our posts. She drew inspiration from Parisian artistic life, along with the works of Pablo Picasso and Man Ray, specifically the work of painted hands that look like gloves in 1935 a piece Scaparelli herself reimagined in the Hawk Couture collection of 1936 and 7. Her attitude toward collaboration led to groundbreaking creations, working with the creme de la creme of Parisian talent. In 1931, her first collaboration was with Elsa Triolet. They created the Aspirin Necklace, which is made using porcelain beads that are reminiscent of the pain relief tablets. Scaparelli also had a long-term partnership with Spanish artist Salvador Dali, who produced some of the most absurd and iconic work. Their first collaboration was a compact powder case that looked like a rotary phone dial, created in 1935. In 1937, they created the lobster dress for Wallace Simpson to wear on their honeymoon. This was one of the most iconic pieces and was featured in an eight-page spread of Vogue. Also in 1937, they created the shoe hat. This plays with the surrealist idea of selecting an object and then removing it from its usual context. The following year, in 1938, they made the skeleton dress. A black crepe gown with cotton wadding used to imitate protruding bones. They were intentionally subversive, using elements that were normally deemed unattractive and elevating them to the pinnacle of style. Scaparelli also collaborated with Jean Cocteau, a French artist. The pair designed more traditional garments, but their embellishment was no less hypnotic. In 1937, they created a coat with an embroidered optical illusion on the back. Two silhouette faces formed the outline of a vase, topped with a splash of pink flowers. Another piece, an evening jacket featuring a woman's profile with her golden beaded hair flowing down the left sleeve. Scaparelli also forged partnerships with other artists of the era, like Mary Oppenheim, who created fair jewellery pieces, Alberto Giacometti, who designed furniture, brooches and buttons, Jean Dudand, who painted a trademark trompe l'oeil on a dress, and Jean Clement, who created the iconic bug necklace. In 1934, Elsa Scaparelli appeared on the cover of Time magazine. She was the first female designer to ever achieve this honour and was referred to as one of the arbiters of ultra-modern hawkshaw. It was an ode to her success and influence on the entire industry. The following year, in 1935, the Couture House moved to the Hotel de font Pertui in the 21 Place Vendôme, the home it still occupies to this day, a five-storey building of 98 rooms and a ground floor boutique. The space was designed by longtime collaborator and interior designer Jean Michael Frank, alongside Swiss sculptor Alberto Giacometti. This was the first modern interpretation of a couture house with a boutique and artillery in the same building. Here, they produced 10,000 garments a year. The house was a leader in haute couture, jewelry, perfume, cosmetics, lingerie, and swimwear. Known for its flamboyant colours and for combining eccentricity with simplicity, 
Schiaparelli's look were worn by the biggest stars. Actresses such as Lauren Bacall, Zaza Gabor, and Marlene Dietrich could all be seen sporting her art. Elsa was paving the way for other designers as one of the first to enlist the theme to the season. The 1935 Stop, Look and Listen collection featured newspaper print, specifically press clips that featured Schiaparelli news. This self-referential technique is still seen on the runways today, notably with John Galliano's work for Dior. The 1938 Pagan collection incorporated hats made from fake flora and buttons shaped like insects. The same year, the Zodiac collection featured garments embellished with views of plants and constellations. The icon of the season was a cape, embroidered with celestial imagery in tinsel and gold thread, demonstrating her love for rich fabrics, embroidery and adornments. Also, in 1938, the circus collection created clown hats and balloon-shaped purses, which were paired with spectacular prints and miniature acrobat and horse-shaped buttons. Her designs were innovative, powerful and controversial. Whilst Elsa, she also had a strong understanding of the power of direct marketing. In 1937, she created the first ever fashion show in her Parisian showroom, another pioneering move. Elsa's miraculous visions transformed the face of fashion. In 1937, Scaparelli made shocking pink her signature color. Not Barbie, not Valentino, Elsa Scaparelli is the genius behind the standout hot pink that we see today. She said, I gave to pink the nerve of the red, a neon pink, and an unreal pink. This coincided with the release of Schiaparelli's shocking perfume. Elsa labelled it as a couture perfume with meticulous detail on the bottle. The bottle is based on the dressmaker's model of Elsa's muse, Mae West, with a measuring tape dress across the bottle's shoulders. It was an instant bestseller and remains the number one for almost 30 years. Scaparelli was well accustomed to the world of fragrances. Influenced by her old mentor, Paul Poiré, who was the original fashion couturier to create a fragrance, Elsa launched her fragrance house in 1929. The first perfume was called S. Elsa had a superstition to the letter, and you see it used multiple times throughout her work. Next came the fragrance trio perfumes called Suki, Salut, and Scap, each scent designed to be worn during different times of the day. Scap for daytime, Suki for cocktail hour, and Salut for the evening. This intended creation was a pioneering concept for the fragrance world. In 1939, she launched her only men's fragrance, called Snuff, named after the ground tobacco. As a reference to a key element of manhood at the time, the bottle was shaped like a pipe in the packaging of a cigar box. In 1940, a fragrance called Sleeping was released, made to be sprayed at night to help the wearer drift off. In true Scaparelli style, it was another whimsical, fun, night-like design. The next fragrance was Leroy Soleil, another collaboration between Elsa and Salvador Dali. The bottle was in the shape of a sun, to represent the Sun King, Louis XIV. Only 2,000 exclusive bottles of the perfume were produced, and the glass was designed by crystal maker Baccarat. In 1947, the house opened a perfume factory in the suburbs of Paris, a department that was a huge attribution to the Scaparelli brand. Do you think it will ever come back? To go back to 1941, during World War II, Scaparelli left Paris and moved to New York, where rather than designing, she involved herself with war-related volunteering activities. Although she was providing service as a nurse's aide, her design house remained open in Paris, but collections were prepared by associates. After four years, at the end of the occupation in 1945, she returned to Paris and resumed her career. Upon her return, Paris was facing the emergence of a new generation of couturiers, notably Christian Dior and Christabel Balenciaga. In 1947, Dior, like Scaparelli had 20 years earlier, captivated America and Europe with what became known as the new look. It had shock value, but a more conventional sort than that of Scaparelli. In 1946, Elsa created the concept of a capsule collection, specifically made for traveling, called the Constellation Wardrobe. This laid the foundation of modern ready-to-wear, containing six dresses, one reversible hat, and three folding hats. The wardrobe is a sensation, as it represents the emancipation of women and anticipates their more frequent travels. In 1947, Hubert de Givenchy was hired as creative director, where he stayed for four years. 
Over this time, he created pieces following Schiaparelli's sense of fun, playfulness, combined with his own youthful and wearable elegance. He used this role as experience before leaving to create his own Maison in 1951. Schiaparelli continued to create hugely iconic pieces. In 1949, she created oversized jewelry, a giant bee brooch, and notably the iconic Salvador Dali bejeweled ruby lips brooch with pearl teeth. In 1950, the tuxedo dress made its debut and featured diagonal buttoning. In 1951, they ventured into the world of eyewear, creating bejeweled glasses adorned with fringe cellophane. Scaparelli was once again a pioneer in the industry, anticipating the trend and licensing sunglasses. Their iconic silhouette is still recreated today. In 1953, one of Elsa's final iconic moments was the creation of the costumes for Zaza Gabor, who was starring in John Huston's film, Moulin Rouge, obviously including a shocking pink number. The film was later donated by Anna Wintour as having the best costumes of all time. Then, a year later in 1954, having struggled adapting to the post-war climate, Scaparelli declared bankruptcy and had to close the Couture House. Elsa retired and devoted herself to her autobiography, Shocking Life. She moved to Tunisia and built a home. She later passed away in her sleep in 1973, aged 83. Elsa is an unrecognisable designer for most people. She's often a forgotten designer, not recognised nearly enough for her work. During her life, she was overlooked for being ahead of her time. As a woman with an incredible eye for business and a unique sense of art and fashion, she didn't fit into the norms at all of that time. Her success was, however, later recognised in 2012 as the Met Spring 2012 Costume Institute exhibition, Scaparelli and Prada, Impossible Conversations. This explored the affinities between Elsa Scaparelli and Muccia Prada, two Italian designers from different eras. Scaparelli on surrealism and Muccia on eclectic postmodernism. The exhibition even featured an orchestrated AI conversation between the iconic women. Then, unexpectedly, almost 40 years after its original closure, Italian businessman Diego Della Valle of Todd's Group acquired the brand in 2007. He hoped to revive it in the same way he had resurrected shoemaker Roger Vivier. Later, in 2012, Scaparelli was reopened in its old home at Hotel de Font at the Place Vendôme. The brand, whose name was once synonymous with some of Paris's most innovative and influential creations, was reborn as a modern reflection of that legacy. In 2013, Christian Lacroix created the first comeback haute couture collection dedicated to Elsa Scaparelli as a means of underscoring the Scaparelli legacy. Later that year, Marco Zanini was appointed creative director. With experience at Versace, Dolce & Gabbana and Holston, Zanini's potential was exciting. However, his tenure was short-lived, lasting just two years. His strategy of starting with custom suits and dresses before branching into accessories and perfume failed to amass the sales they needed. His pieces were practically unwearable and sometimes too literal. Ginormous, 1940s gone haywire, padded shoulders, overly outre hats, lashings of fur, and other oversized wonders were the staples all displayed in front of a bright pink backdrop. He was succeeded by Bertrand Goyon in 2015, a Ecole de la Chambre Syndicale de la Couture Parisan graduate. He had previously worked at Valentino alongside Pierre Paolo Piccioli and Maria Grazia Ciori at Givenchy under Hubert Givenchy and John Galliano, plus experience at Alexander McQueen and Christian Lacroix. Another exciting prospect for the brand, he delved into the design archives of the label, injecting a fresh contemporary vibe into Scaparelli's Hawkeye collection, and recently developing a ready-to-wear and accessories line, featuring a first handbag called Secret de Scaparelli. He also referenced Elsa's love for animals, creating a headpiece of her fox terrier, and one creating a real-life version of the flower head that comes on the shocking fragrance bottle. His designs won favour with celebrities including Tilda Swinton, Celine Dion and Lady Gaga. In 2017, Scaparelli was awarded the official Hawke Couture label by the French Ministry of Industry and the French Couture Federation. The French industry standards protect the term Hawke Couture itself by law. Each garment must be made to measure for a private client and every look requires at least two fittings. Then, each couture house must produce at least 25 designs every season for the biannual shows in January and July. The Scaparelli signature appears in none other than Shocking Pink. However, in 2019, Goyon announced his departure. It was a shocking and rather unexpected departure, as his work was brilliant. In his place, 
Daniel Rosebery was appointed as artistic director. Rosebery is an American designer. He grew up in Texas in a very religious household. So much so, he even considered becoming a priest. However, after spending some time traveling after high school, he returned to study at New York's Fashion Institute. He left after two years to begin working with Tom Brown, who became his mentor for 10 years. He showed his first collection at Scaparelli only two months after joining. During the show, he sat in the center of the runway, recreating the processes of designing and sketching the collection. One in which he said he deliberately avoided referencing or imitating the work of Elsa Scaparelli, and instead aimed to focus on capturing the spirit and bravery of Scaparelli. During his tenure at the house, Rosebery has become known for resurrecting some of the Maison's most beloved and influential codes and iconography. While paying homage to its founders, Elsa Scaparelli's love of surrealism, he has also added his own personal aesthetic with his frequent use of fold jewelry, hardware, and sculpting alongside repurposed denim. He said, I tried to re-establish the voice of the house and make it personal. When I felt that we had done that, I was able to return Elsa's work. Like Scaparelli herself, who was known for for her technical innovations. Rosebery is particularly interested in experimenting with new or unlikely fabrics, such as molded leather and metal breastplates and body parts. One of Rosebery's most pinnacle moments was dressing Lady Gaga in 2021 to sing the national anthem at the inauguration of president-elect Joe Biden. She wore a brass dove on her chest, holding an olive branch as a symbol of harmony and peace. Rosebery initially envisioned the ensemble being all white, but switched to a red and blue color scheme at the suggestion of Gaga, a lifelong fan of Scaparelli. Daniel's designs for Scaparelli have been seen on Beyonce, Michelle Obama, Kim Kardashian, Julia Fox, Kanye West, and Bella Hadid. In 2023, Rosebery launched his first ready-to-wear line for the house, being exclusively sold through Bergdorf Goodmans. This could be their new strategy for gaming customers in an easier market. After all, bags and accessories do make these brands the most money. Do you think Scaparelli could produce the next it piece, or do you not want them to? Is this a brand that's best sticking to its heritage and hawk jaw? Or do you think that they're on their way to compete with the likes of Chanel and Dior? No matter what happens next, the house is no longer a forgotten memory, and rather a thriving empire rising again. One that would be much harder for us to forget should it go bankrupt for a second time around. Thank you very much for watching this video on Elsa Scaparelli. If you want to know more about the luxury fashion industry, I would definitely recommend watching this video because it is full of value and information. Don't forget to join me and Ella in the Lux Circle, but if not, I will see you in the next video.